Hi guys, it's me, Sarah Soderlund, also known as Paranormal Sarah. <clears throat> now I'm joining you on a very special day, and that is, of course, the full moon. They say, they, whoever they are, um, that the full moon is obviously <clears throat> one of the important um, times of intuition and magic. It's always closely associated with that female lunar cycle, that female intuition, the moon, the mistress, the deep dark undercurrents of our intuition and our unconscious mind, our dreams, the fluid, the water of nature, like all of these associations that we make. And you might also be seeing it referred to as the super moon. It's the two of three that we're having um, in a series this year. But with that, some people don't like that word um, because really it's just that it means that it appears super because it's very close to Earth. So it's it's very massive in the sky. We see it's very bright. It's very direct. And we just go out there and we're like, holy cow. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean anything uh, gigantuously different than any other full moon. Uh, but if you are a gardener, if you work in social services, if you're familiar with synchronicities and you watch and observe how people change, react, and are influenced by the lunar cycles. We're not talking lycanthropy here, but we are talking just shifts, pulls, tides, forces, menstrual cycles, what have you. It seems to be the adopted belief or theory that during a full moon cycle, the human organism, as well as every other organism on earth, is kind of experiencing higher emotions. We're kind of feeling that pull from our satellite there, right? So I've got my notes here. I'm going to make sure my computer doesn't go to sleep on me. Um, but yesterday, the sun moved into Pisces. Astrologically speaking, I always refer to and share with my clients that the sun is kind of that center of the universe. It's egotistical. It's male. It's opposite of the moon. So you have the female and the male. It brings kind of this balance to those of us here on Earth, and it gives us the cycles of day and night. It gives us the gravitational pull, the cyclical motions, the what we know to be life here on earth is only in gratitude to the sun. It nourishes us. So metaphorically speaking, that's how we see it when we're looking and kind of deciphering astrology, right? So in psychology, that makes sense to me because I'm like, okay, it's the, it's the giver of life. It's the nourisher. It's the sun. I mean, you do have to have the sun, right? We're talking photosynthesis and just kind of how we react in the things that we need, <clears throat> Now, Pisces is a generalization of personality traits given to this water. What do we already know about water? Fluid, intuition, it's, it's hard to hold, it's, it's easy to spill. It's all that stuff that's very difficult to measure. All of those things that science, logic, rational mind, trying to be objective, but everything that can, can and does maybe go wrong on a Valentine's Day for example, is going to be intuition, emotion, empathy, these kinds of uh, fluid energies that we see really moving heavy through the sign of Pisces. And now the sun is in Pisces. So we're like, okay, as of yesterday, we kind of feel this need to nourish our emotional self, the sense that we need to address and feed, maybe even be receptive to, dramatize, embellish, exaggerate, do whatever we can to take note of, observe, and give attention to um, those things in our life that we associate with our, our deep emotions and our fluidity of intuition. Now, at the very same time, we had Mercury going into Pisces. So, bu -bu -bu -bu, to an, another planetary thing. And, and if you're not into astrology, trust me, my husband is not. He's like, so? Well, there's no doubt when we go outside and we stand up and we look out, um, at least I don't dare to be egotistical enough or narcissistic enough to say that these huge masses, these planetary things in our galaxy, uh, we are like on a perfect Goldilocks, uh, just f fulcrum here of, of, of divine balance, really. And if something were to shift in our galaxy, we would know, we would feel it, and we would all be affected. And so I love to know how we are affected or to pay attention to the generalizations throughout cultures of what to expect when Mercury is in, the, is in the sky. Mercury is direct. Mercury moving into Pisces, right? Pisces, guys, we're just referring to the zodiac parts of the sky, constellations, regions of our star map and how it's broken down. And when you see Mercury, the planet, the actual, yes, we can measure it. No, it is not flat, planet. Um, when Mercury's direct, 
it tends to affect our communication, not only with ourselves, but with one another, whether it's a stranger or a loved one. And so you had communication going into emotions. So we're feeling the nourishment of these emotions, and we also feel this need to want to communicate them. And it's really about being receptive. These last few days, I feel, and maybe you have, maybe you haven't, there's been kind of this fogginess in the mind, a kind of lull in the body and in the energy. Uh, the mind is much busier than the body wants to be, and that is okay, because that is really kind of what the shifts in and around us are doing. We're seeing kind of that uh, calm in the storm, like we're in the center of a tornado, and we're just being very receptive to how lucky we are to have come this far to come through 2018, continuing to take the endeavors of 2019, these hard winters, these long, cold, snowy days, and to be able to mold it and use it and just say, <clears throat> we're almost there, and um, to conserve your energy. But the mind is still thinking. So we kind of have this idea that this is where everybody's kind of sitting, right? We're all kind of feeling this now, depending on your birth chart, depending on what sign you were born under, what was in the stars the day you were born on this earth, um, you're going to have a push or a pull or a connection to certain things in the sky. It was closest to you on the day you were born, and it's like your liver knows it. Uh, and when Saturn is direct, all is well. Um, it's kind of individualized for each person, but for the most part, everyone's affected um, the same way. Now, there's been this Venus shifting with Saturn, and of course, Venus, I think the book, Women Go to Venus, Men Go to Mars, uh, has been a good kind of get stuck in people's minds maybe, but that Venus is feminine, it's about love and sensuality, and Saturn is kind of about influences and abundance and having this pull for things that get stuck in your atmosphere. <laughs> But um, so we're kind of feeling these shifts over here and like, what do we want and what do we, what do we desire and what are we passionate about? And we're really kind of trying to pinpoint and find these interests of ours. But today, dun, 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 it was actually at 1054 this morning. So we're kind of on the waning part of it already, but we're still feeling the power of the super moon. Um, and of course, the Cherokee, which is some of my ancestry that I love to identify with, um, is the bone moon. I love these references with different cultures that call the ice moon, the snow moon, the spring moon, the bone moon. I was very familiar with calling it the bone moon. And not just so much because it's cold to the bone. <laughs> things are down to the bone, all of the food that you've accumulated through the fall, all the stuff that you hunted and kept in your freezer, everything's down to the bone, getting down to the last of the resources. But also because a lot of times, especially when you're nomadic, you're an indigenous, um, you are very ceremonial about your dead. And for those who are not surviving the winter and they pass, uh, being able to bury them or engage in ritual when it's too cold, the ground is too frozen, and it's just not appropriate to be outside and to be dancing and celebrating a life. <clears throat> Oftentimes, you would gather the bones and be carrying them with you. They would become a sacred part of your daily routine, and you would incorporate them into your life until you could give them proper burial. So I think of the bone moon as being this very visceral reminder to anybody who has survived this far. I mean, luckily, we're in first world problems if you're watching this right now. Um, but it wasn't so long ago that people all over the planet uh, were really struggling and fighting for resources and many people wouldn't make it, wouldn't have made it. So there's this great feeling of divine gratitude and relief. But also, this is the bone moon that you say, okay, I've made it and now I've got work to do. I've got to start planning for spring because it's right around the corner. And so the mind starts getting busy preparing. We start feeling these nesting energies. And what better, thank you, universe, um, what better zodiac sign, when you look at all of the zodiac signs, whether you subscribe to the 12 or the 13, and you look at their generalized persona, personality traits, and you say, gosh, if I could have one of these um, on my team for coming out of a rough year, 
I'm doing a lot of emotional work, mental work. I need someone who's supportive, someone who's stable, someone who's a good worker and who can help me get my shit in order. Uh, the Virgo, definitely somebody you want. And the universe said, I will give you Virgo. I will give you the bone moon in Virgo. You will feel the power to manifest. You will want to be a perfectionist. This is an earth sign. This helps us ground. This is so perfect for the bone moon for this time as we're kind of prepping, but also it's zero degrees. But what does that mean? Well, think about it if you can remember back so far as you math and you've got your protractor and you're looking at all the degrees. Zero degrees is that clean slate. It is, astrologically speaking, a zero, just like in divination, the bottom rung is a beginning point. It's a starting point. It's that tabula rosa, and it's clean of all of our past bullshit, all of our anchors, all of our cords, all of our emotional attachments, all of our demons, all of our all that stuff that we've been carrying, that we've been dealing with. <clears throat> We're going to feel that full moon urge to nest and we're going to have Virgo energies going nest and do this and organize that and clean this and dust that and don't forget to do this and you need to buy that put that in your Amazon cart but wait until then because it's going to be 40% off and don't do that because Karen did it last week and that was a fail so don't do that okay let's do this let's get it together let's go one two three let's go and like that Virgo energy is ready to get things cooking so that's today and we know that our emotions are going to be running high so we might be focusing on the details don't get too caught up but do focus and be aware of the details from the very beginning. And particularly with Virgo, you know, I'm a Virgo, I'm born in August, so I can really identify with this energy. And particularly it's about being aware of what we culminate and also adjusting our daily routine. If, if you've been looking to start a diet, start a new routine, add a new app that keeps you accountable for meditation, journaling, taking a nap, whatever, lowering your sugar, increasing your iron, increasing your water, whatever. Today is a really good day to do it. If you're watching this, do it now. Uh, now is a really good time where everything in the universe is going to be behind you going, yep, okay, she's doing it, put it on the list, okay, like it's the universe is with us on this one. So think about how you can improve and adjust your daily routine. Now, I was watching, and this is why, of course, you guys are watching me, because I do all the research, right? Um, I am not a professional astrologer, no. Um, now, I'm a psychology major working on my doctorate. I'm a counselor, um, and I have been a psychic for, ooh, I don't want to say how many years, but going on a few decades, and working professionally in parapsychology and in counseling of those in a forensic matter. So when I apply all of my interests, my hobbies, my education, my experience, my life trauma, my intuition, um, and, I, and I do all of that, and I interpret it as best I can, astrology is not a strong point. It's not something I was terribly raised with. I was raised with the lunar cycle, but I go to other astrologers, and another astrologer was, was mentioning how important this particular lunar cycle is, if you care, <clears throat> that... Back in, I want you to think back, 18 months ago, 18 months ago, it's kind of rough, right? It was August 21st. It was right before my birthday, right before school was starting, not last year, but the year before in 2017. Now there was an eclipse that August, it was August 21st, and the energies and planets that were there in that moment it was the beginning of a certain culmination of eclipses that were going to start a domino effect that along the way there are definitely milestones of disaster. But like in psychology, divination, counseling, we know sometimes rock bottom is that epiphany that can only come in that form and allow someone true healing. Now in 2017, this would have been the start to a thought <clears throat> There's a particular thing that you were thinking about, that you were th you were starting. Maybe you got engaged, you were, you were planning your wedding. Maybe you started a new school and you were just starting a new program. Maybe you moved to a new state. It's hard to say, but whatever you were doing back in August 21st of 2017, it kind of imprinted, if you will, the dimensions and universes at that time with all that planetary alignment and then ching, 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 ching. 
Nine months later, there was another lunar eclipse. It was May 21st, 2018. Last spring. May 21st. Now this was another part of this lunar series that you have from August 21st, 2017, just a year full of learning and not in a fun way but the culmination nine months later we start to see the growth and the progress it's a milestone of yeah there might have been a major hurricane earthquake volcanic eruption syphilis outbreak uh, you name it major disasters for me i had a kidney stone that got me that got terribly infected because they thought it was a gallstone but it wasn't. I didn't have a gallbladder. They weren't sure what it was. It ended up being a kidney stone that got infected all throughout my body. I had to have stents. I had to have surgery. I had to have three surgeries. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I remember it was just after I had completed the police academy and I was contemplating, well, what now? You know, you complete the police academy to go in with physical stuff and now I'm being told I have six months of recovery and what am I going to do with my life? <sighs> it was a struggle. But then May 21st is this establishment of growth and progress. Last May was I had just quit my job as a case manager working for the state, um, doing serious and persistent mental illness work, and was planning to move. Interesting. Growth and progress. Going with the change or not. And now here we are coming into this full moon today. And it says, here you are. I've cleared you a space at the table. All that bull stuff can be behind you now. Look at where you're at and take everything I've given you, evaluate, be grateful, and then just take what you need and go whatever direction you want. It is this moon that says, if you want, if tonight you go dancing naked under the moon, you write down a few things on a piece of paper, a bay leaf on a piece of toilet paper, modern witches, and flush it down the toilet. Write down what bothers you. Write down what you want to let go of. Write down the molestation, the drug addiction, the friends that have left you, the people that have cheated on you, the shame, the guilt, the worry, the stress, the anxiety, the depression, the, the labels. Let it all go. Write it down, journal it out, sing it out, cry it out. Do what you have to do. The Virgo moon at zero degrees for the bone moon says, here it is, baby. I am wiping out the planet. I am doing a huge winter. I am just killing it so that you can start fresh. The resources will be abundant because of there will be little who have endured. Be aware. So that's all I'm saying to those of you guys watching, if you've stayed with me this far. Um, <clears throat> in the next few days, we're going to see the moon moving into Libra, which when that happens, Libra, right, she's the, the Lady Justice. She is usually blind. She is without judgment, right? It's to help us with these letting go. If we did that, we're going to really be able to communicate and empathize and feel Libra. Yes, I don't even care about that anymore. I don't see that anymore. I just want love. I want love. I want love. And then Libra comes in and she says, this is what I can do. And the moon is going, ah, oh, let's find balance. Let's find balance and harmony through Thursday and through Friday. Um, and then after that, we're going to see the moon move into Scorpio. After we get balanced, after we get our shit figured out, after we get focused and the Virgos like, check, 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 check. You're 82% there. Good job. Let's go. And then Libra says, oh, we're finding it. We're, we're just relaxed. Then all of a sudden, it, the moon is going to move into Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, those generalizations of Scorpio is that it's very mysterious, like a little scorpion hiding under a rock that comes out only at night and bites you in your sock. The scorpion is quiet, keeps to itself. It's not fuzzy. It's not cuddly. It doesn't keep a tribe. It stings you. But a scorpion can be useful, not just for Botox, not just for eating. I heard they taste like roasted marshmallows, but Scorpio can get to the bottom of things. Scorpio is the master of illusion and mystery. And so as the moon moves into Scorpio, we're going to want to explore our concerns like, 
now that I have a clean slate, like what are my deepest worries or concerns or fears about what's going to happen as you start to evaluate? Scorpio is a really good sign to have help you investigate what you can do better and what you can do more of to reach those goals. So without spending too much time, guys, I just wanted to record this quick video and encourage you to get out tonight, look at the moon, take time today, even if it's just five, 10 minutes, communicate with someone that you love that's a support system. That's that Mercury and Pisces. Communicate what it is that you really want to plant for the spring. Symbolically, what you want to see grow in your life. Reach out to your support system and use these energies of Virgo to nurture and to kick into gear all the things that you need to do to take care of yourself and your others. It's a tribe mentality, really. It's the family unit. <clears throat> Through networking and collaboration, everybody kind of joins together here at the Bone Moon and goes marching into spring together. So if we can delegate, <clears throat> we can support one another. You know, many hands make light work. So take use of these energies. Take use of these support systems in our sky. Much like religious um, icons help provide faith and strength in times of need, where you find yourself clasping your hands together and praying towards a deity that you feel closeness to, don't forget that you can also look up to the stars and to the sun and to the moon and to all of the planets in our galaxy. They are always there, whether you see them or not. Sometimes we do. So um, they're not as strict either how you pray or when you pray. So there's not as much judgment. And I encourage you to enjoy what the Virgo full moon is bringing. There's a lot of relief in the next few days. There's a lot of power to get going and a lot of momentum to make things right and to make things better. And so that's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm meditating on. And that's what I am amplifying in my full moon ceremonies tonight. Be sure and join me on Instagram at Paranormal Sarah or on Facebook later tonight live guys at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time every Tuesday. I do Paramania Radio and an hour before that, I go on Facebook and do free live mini readings. So if you've been interested or wanting to book a reading, I know it's been pretty busy usually after the new year and especially with Valentine's Day shortly after. We witches find ourselves very busy, whether it's love spells or forecasts or what have you for the new year, taxes, selling houses. Um, it's a pretty busy time, but it's a great time. It's a really good time to join in on that momentum, to kind of kick back, let the jacuzzi current of the collective consciousness move in the direction you want and trust your support system to guide you in the right direction. So I hope you're paying attention with me, paying awareness with me, and that you will join me live tonight for the mini readings. And even after that, for the show, we're doing archetypes. So if you're into psychology and into the paranormal, you'll probably want to tune in. All right, guys, until then, I'll